In this video, I'm going to talk about container orchestrators and answer your questions on Docker versus Kubernetes and AWS ECS versus AWS EKS. Hi, I'm Rohini Gaukar and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thank you for stopping by. I release one video every week in the ongoing This Week I Learned series where I talk about tech tips and tools. This month, I'm going to give you a crash course in Docker, Kubernetes, scaling containers on AWS and more. So please subscribe and click on that notification button to know when my next video comes out. Last week, I talked about why containers, what is Docker and how do you install it? And we also created a sample app on AWS Cloud. Today, let's start with a super basic question. Isn't Docker enough? Why do we need these container orchestration tools, something like Kubernetes? Well, we learned in the Docker video, you have a server. It could be a physical or a virtual server on which you have an operating system. On this, you would run the container runtime. In our case, it was Docker engine that was the container runtime, which internally uses container D. And we can create as many containers inside the server as many as we can fit. Now, managing one server with four containers or two servers with eight containers is still manageable. I can log into each of these machines. I can create containers. I can delete the containers. I can add more CPU or memory to them as required by my application. However, real world applications are not so simple. Your application will have a lot of requests. For example, let's say you're running a game using these containers and you have containers for uh, front end and containers for back end and databases and so on and so forth. Now you share this application or your game with a few of your friends. They started playing, they referred it to some other friends and now more people are actually playing your game. That is great. But in the back end, your application needs to scale which means you have to add more and more and more containers so that all these awesome people can actually play the game and not get an error. So in real world, you don't just manage two machines with a handful of containers, but you will have tens, hundreds, or even thousands of containers, especially if they're paired with the microservices architecture. Moreover, how will you manage this? Will you keep signing into these different machines and create containers and add them or add it behind the load balancer, delete them if it is failing or if your demand is slow, are you going to go ahead and shut down these machines? Now you would say you could hire people to actually take care of this, but think about it. Is this something that actually helps your business grow? It's a maintenance activity. It is something that should be automated. You should focus on hiring people that can actually develop new features or new services that will actually help grow your business. This is undifferentiated heavy lifting. Something you need to do, you must do, but it is not really increasing your competitive advantage in the eyes of your customers. So to manage all these containers and your application, you use container orchestrators. Remember that conductor who does the orchestration or to combine the sounds of complex musical instruments into a really blissful music? Similarly, you need something to manage these complex containers and the servers for a smooth functioning application. So going back to our example, the container orchestration tool will actually take care of the operational effort of running these containers on the container runtime and you can focus on building the game. Kubernetes is one such example of a container orchestrator. Now, before I proceed to explain what are the major tasks of this orchestrator, you have to understand two concepts, a control plane and a worker plane. Kubernetes or this container orchestration is the control plane. This is the brain of the entire operation. On the other side, you have the worker plane or in simple words, the hands that actually do the work. The worker plane is typically one that provides the CPU memory storage that is needed by your container to run. So for example, 
AWS EC2 instance or a virtual machine is the worker plane or a node on which your containers are running and you can have tens or hundreds of these virtual machines. Kubernetes or AWS ECS or EKS are hosted on separate machines or a plane. They are the brains behind this entire operation and they have to manage how many containers are required, which container runs on which machine, and if there's an update to your container image or your application or, or, or a microservice, all of these things, the orchestrator will actually define or decide. So typically, your container orchestrator will have three major responsibilities. First, service management. It ensures that your desired number of containers are actually running at a given point of time. Like, I need four containers in two availability zones. And if any of them is failing, please go ahead and replace it with a new healthy container. Or if there are any changes to the application, then upgrade or downgrade the containers accordingly. Or provide service discovery. Like, hey, this microservice is alive and ready to take the traffic here. Second, scheduling. Ensure that your containers are added or removed based on your application load changes. Like I mentioned, like users are playing your game in the day, so add more containers, but at night, some of them are not playing, they're going to sleep, so remove containers and free up space and cost, save money. Third, resource management. Understand the resources like CPU, memory, ports that all of these worker nodes are providing and then managing it in a single pool, like a cluster. Now, we will dive deeper into Kubernetes and its terminology in some other video. So if you ask me, Docker versus Kubernetes, then it's not like you would use Docker or Kubernetes. It's more like you would use Docker and Kubernetes. Docker is the container engine and Kubernetes is actually helping you manage the containers that Docker engine will create. Kubernetes also supports other container runtime engines. You can find more details in its documentation. I will provide the link in the description below. Now, Kubernetes on EC2 versus AWS ECS versus EKS. Now, when it comes to AWS, you can definitely create these containers on AWS EC2 like we did in the Docker video. You can also install and manage your own Kubernetes control plane. But remember, while Kubernetes manages these containers, you have to manage the brain or the control plane that is Kubernetes. You have to ensure that it is available at all times. Because if the brain fails, so will the workers. And that is why AWS provides managed services. Remember, we talked about the undifferentiated heavy lifting. Managing Kubernetes or any orchestration software is needed but it does not really affect how your customers are going to adopt your business. So AWS service like Amazon EKS or Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service is a managed Kubernetes service where it's still Kubernetes, but AWS takes care of the brain heavy lifting. AWS also has a service called as Amazon ECS or Amazon Elastic Container Service which is AWS take on container orchestration. Now, if you ask me ECS versus EKS, that's my opinion. ECS is good if you are a beginner with containers. It simplifies a lot of terminologies and decreases a lot of decisions that you might have to make to run your containerized applications. EKS is managed Kubernetes. And Kubernetes does have its own world of terminologies and concepts and tools. It does have a lot of flexibility and Kubernetes, you can have a lot more control on the tooling itself. People choose EKS because they are used to Kubernetes or their teams have used it before and they want to continue using it. But they want AWS to actually manage the control plane. So as all answers in IT, it depends on what you want to do. Now, there's a lot more details to discuss on the compute layer of these orchestration tools and how you can do that on AWS, but we will discuss that in another video. Thank you for watching this video. 
let me know in the comment section if you want me to explain any other topics or to further simplify any of these topics that we discussed today. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe, you know, the usual and help me continue sharing technical knowledge in a simple language to you all. See you next time.